What is going on YouTube? Jamie Potter here, PhD in Organizational Behavior from the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. Today I'm talking about the broad, important topic, not only in work, but outside of work, of personality. And in particular, one question, again, that is relevant, not only in the workplace, but also outside, just for people in general, and that is the idea of personality change. So there's sort of competing theories here about whether personality actually changes. And this question goes back to actually 1890 and William James, one of the seminal authors who wrote The Principles of Psychology. It's since been reprinted a lot in sort of early stage PhD classes. You read certain chapters of it. And it's a very cool book, much like early sort of sociology literature as well, where it's it's really discursive. They just kind of talk about ideas and just run with them. And it really laid the groundwork for a lot of the sort of early theories of psychology that later turned into more strict empirical tests that we see nowadays with a lab study and a field experiment, etc. And one of these ideas that came out of it, actually, as William James said, and the five factor model of personality, which many of us use and I'll talk a bit more about, say that personality is set in stone, or as the paper says, calls it the plaster hypothesis. You know, personality changes throughout childhood, of course, but the theory is that by the time you hit about 30 years old, it's really sort of calcified and it won't really change from there. However, there's a flip side of this as well. More recently, contextualist theories of personality say that well, obviously some part of personality is set. We are who we are, but there are also environmental factors that impact all of us and that can influence and change personality. So the authors of this study wanted to pit these two ideas against each other and see which theory is correct. Going back a hundred plus years. So what they did is they actually took two large scale online surveys. Think of those personality tests you take uh, one of them actually was a which Star Wars character are you? A lot of people do. Which Game of Thrones character are you? And take it and it actually is a real personality test underlying and then they sort of match it to sort of these like prototypical personalities of these characters from movies or books, what have you. So when they do these two large scale surveys, they were able to collect the data from one of the providers of these online and able to look across these cohorts and have 100,000 plus people and say, let's see if personality actually does largely stay the same after age 30 or whether it actually changes and keeps adapting. Before we get to that, briefly, we have to talk about the five factor model of personality that I alluded to, which says for one underlying that personality should not change. It is set like plaster, especially after age 30. Um, but the five factors are, the way I remember it is the OCEAN acronym. O is openness to experience, kind of as it sounds. It's, are you creative? Are you open to trying new things? Conscientiousness, that is just hard work and diligence, being dependable. Extroversion, do I get energy from being around others? Or do I get energy from being alone, reading a nice book with a cup of tea? Agreeableness, as it sounds again, uh, when I'm discussing with people, do I have a knack for or a tendency to just kind of agree and smooth things over or am I more argumentative and disagreeable? And lastly, neuroticism or its converse, emotional stability as they say, kind of how do I react to change and stressful events? And so of course, without further ado, what does this paper show? For one, do these personality traits change over time. I'm gonna show you this diagram here, figure one from the paper. One of my favorite diagrams because it really just lays all of this out really nicely and I'll kind of talk through the main results here. For one, as you can see after age 30, many of these personality traits do indeed change, most notably conscientiousness extroversion and neuroticism and they actually compare it between genders as well because there are some interesting gender by age effects but again conscientiousness and agreeableness starting there both of these increase they actually have interesting theories behind this agreeableness largely because 
as you hit your late 20s, early 30s, you're likely many people in the world are having children around this time. And it sort of forces you, as any parent knows, to be more agreeable. That's sort of an interesting underlying theory here. And indeed, they do find proof for this that agreeableness does increase before leveling out a bit. Conscientiousness, also, again, if you think of sort of life events that are occurring, when you get into your 20s, you're kind of finding a career, you're doing more serious things in the world, not that school is not serious, but you really kind of have to force yourself to build a career and that takes conscientiousness. Interestingly, the authors do talk about whether it is conscientiousness that makes us pick these environments. In, in other words, as I mature, do I become more conscientious and then I pick environments that fit that changed personality? Or is it vice versa, where I'm just not conscientious, but as I hit 25 years old, I get a job that requires it? And so is it the environment impacting me? Or is it my own maturation and my own increased conscientiousness that is impacting the environments or the work environments that I end up choosing? The authors don't really have a say on this, they just talk about it in the discussion section. But it is interesting to consider and it's likely sort of a bi-directional relationship where I choose different environments as I get older, more conscientious, and then those environments also force me to be more conscientious as well. And we see that conscientiousness does indeed also increase not only up to age 30, but beyond that we get more and more conscientious. And then neuroticism is the last one where we really see big changes here. In particular, you see on average, of course, women start at a higher level, kind of in their teens and early 20s. And that decreases over time in a really kind of linear way until it's sort of matching, again, the average for men. There's a lot of variation around this, but it does show kind of, for one, really interestingly, that personality does change. This is a, something that not everyone knows. I think people think of, and I think of personality as a trait, and traits stay the same, much like intelligence. Intelligence is an aptitude, and that theoretically at least stays the same. But we also know that intelligence does change as we see personality does as well. I hope you enjoy this really interesting paper here. It has implications for work because conscientiousness and extroversion especially are really related to our work performance, conscientiousness across all jobs, extroversion across certain jobs like sales, for example. And yeah, really cool paper here. If you're also just wondering generally, people love personality tests as this paper shows. They love taking the Star Wars or Game of Thrones test and it is relevant after age 30. You know, I can take one at age 30 and then one at age 35 and actually it may change. So that is kind of an interesting idea that comes from this paper. So if you do think your personality has changed since you were 24, 25, or since you were 31 or 32, take a new personality test and see because it really does have a lot of implications for what jobs you choose and what jobs you do well at in the future. So hope you enjoyed it. I will be back next week with another paper. Definitely subscribe to the channel, check out my other videos, comment below. And until then, have a good weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.